Happy Wednesday, everyone. I hope it's gotten off to a good start for most of you. It's chilly weather. I chose poorly this morning when I put on short sleeves rather than long sleeves. But uh, one of my readings today was actually from Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is one of those psalms that shows up in the liturgy on Ash Wednesday. And it shows up there because it is the perfect penitential psalm. It is when people want to confess and don't really have the vocabulary to do that or don't really know what confession might entail. It's a great place to start. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. So not only does this help us out uh, in our confession, but it also gives us beautiful, poetic, powerful language to do so. Uh, it's traditionally ascribed as a Psalm of David, which doesn't necessarily mean that David wrote it. It is somehow associated with David. Uh, it has somehow gotten a Davidic kind of uh, of place in, in the canon where where we think about it in terms of David, but there are various uh, there are various ideas on exactly what that means. Um, I know my transgression. Uh, my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. One of the intriguing parts about this particular theology that we see expressed here is uh, that when it comes down to it, we can speak of innocence and guilt, and we certainly know that there are innocent people who suffer and who hurt. We know that there are guilty people uh, who wind up uh, injustice of some kind. Um, whether that's the justice system or whether it's kind of a poetic justice that happens over time. But there is in the Christian understanding of the world this idea that uh, all of us share in, in some way in the guilt of humanity. We are a part of the collective human experience and uh, none of us is 100 percent innocent of the things that have caused the world to go wrong. None of us can claim with 100% accuracy to be guiltless in most of the transactions that, that occur between people and some of the brokenness that happens in the world. And so one of the ways that this Psalm, Psalm 51, shows that to us is, is uh, the writer says, I was born guilty. I, I understand this. However, this is not a pessimistic kind of uh, confessional psalm. It is, in fact, an optimistic uh, psalm because beginning in verse 10, we see this conviction that we can have a new heart, that God can, in fact, transform our spirits from self-centered to God-centered, from from not not caring about those who are around us to, to being deeply loving. And so hear these words, these beautiful words, create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Again, Psalm 51 uh, appears as a penitential psalm in the liturgy of Ash Wednesday, but it's also one that we can return to and we can see the beautiful images of sin, the image of redemption, of God recreating us. And it's not that we work hard and we pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and we make this personal transformation. No, we cooperate with these things. But, but look at what the writer says. Create in me a new heart and put a new and a right spirit within me. Ultimately, this new heart, this new and right spirit, these are gifts of the almighty God who loves his children and who calls to us and who calls to us and who wants us to be his own and to live in continuing ongoing relationship with him. And I pray that for you, 
this day would be one of those instances uh, when you are living in perpetual ongoing relationship with the God who loves you. Go in peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.